starting off this countdown at number 10, the Singapore Stone. Did you know that Singapore has its very own Hercules? Known as Badang, a poor fisherman lived his humble life by the Singapore River. When he realized a water gin had been stealing his fishes, he set a trap to catch the spirit red-handed. He then confronted the captured spirit who promised to grant his wish in return for its release. Badang proceeded to wish for superhuman strength and was soon appointed court warrior by the Sultan of Singapore. Warriors from far and wide started swarming in to challenge the strong man, including India's Wadi Bajaya. The two dueled in a series of contests, and the last one saw them lifting a massive rock and throwing it towards the Singapore River. The rock was discovered years later at the spot where it was said to have landed, and not just that, there was an inscription on it, probably to commemorate Badang's achievement. However, only a fragment of the rock survives today. And as it's been said, the Brits blasted it to pieces in 1843. While it's housed in the temporary closed National Museum of Singapore, you can still see it online. Barely a meter wide, the Singapore stone is a fragment of a large sandstone slab that once stood at the mouth of the Singapore River, blown up in 1843 to widen the passageway of the river mouth. This fragment is believed to be over a thousand years old. Number 9, Red Hill. Red Hill has a bloody tale behind its name. As strange as it sounds, it all started with a swordfish infestation, where the sea creatures attacked unsuspected villagers and fishermen by the shore. An idea came out of using a banana tree trunks as a barricade to trap the swordfishes. He brought this up to the Sultan, who granted permission to proceed. The brilliant plan worked, earning him the respect and admiration of the villagers, but not the Sultan, who soon became envious of the attention. Out of jealousy, he ordered his men to rid the boy even taking his life by any means necessary. And so they did. The poor boy's blood flowed down the hill where he lived, staining it blood red. And so that's how it said it's got its name. Number eight, Kusu Island. An island with an interesting backstory is Kusu Island, also known as a sacred site. The island is home to a Chinese temple and three Malay shrines. But do you know where it gets its name from? Kusu means turtle in Hokkien. And legend has it that a giant turtle transformed into the island to save stranded sailors and fishermen, victims of the stormy weather. The sailors and fishermen returned the following year and the year after with offerings to show their gratitude. From then on, people head down on the ninth month of the lunar calendar to pay their respects. Number seven, Radan Ma. Radan Ma is the name of the area between Taluk Bangla, Bukit Permi, and Jalan Bukit Mara. Sorry if I mispronounced any of that. As well as a couple of known landmarks around the city. It's also the name of a Javanese princess, Radan Ma Ayu. Her father was a warrior prince, her mother was a commoner, and their marriage was condemned by the Sultan. One day, while the warrior prince was away on an expedition, the Sultan ordered his men to burn their house down, killing his wife. Radan, however, was saved by a loyal servant. Upon his return, the devastated warrior prince left the Javanese kingdom for Temasek with his baby daughter. Soon after their arrival, the Sultan of Temasek arranged for the warrior prince to marry his daughter, similar to the tale of Cinderella. Radin's new stepmother wasn't a big fan of hers. The plot thickens when the adult Radin was to marry her stepmother's nephew, whom she refused. Not liking her decision, he attacked her main man in life her father. In an attempt to save him, Radin was hurt in the process, receiving a stab in the heart. It's said that her body is laid to rest at the foot of Mount Faber, where there's a shrine in respect of her loyalty. Number six, Island of Death. Plaumati, or Island of Death, was a former name of Sentosa. While no one knows exactly just how the island got its morbid name, it's been said that the island was once a place of piracy and bloodshed. Other reasons behind its name include the location of the island which was adjacent to Palu Brani, which was the burial ground for many ancient Malay warriors. Then there's a tale about a deadly outbreak called the Bukang Mati Fever in the late 1840s, which almost wiped out the original Bugis settlers on the island. In 1972, Palu Mati was renamed as Sentosa, or Peace and Tranquility, leaving its past behind. Today, it's a beach resort known as the State of Fun. Halfway number five is Singapura. Sang Nila Utama, or Sri Tri Buna, was once the ruler of the Shivajaya Empire at Sumatura. According to legends, he went on an expedition in the late 13th century and discovered an island with a white sandy shore. After learning that the place was called Temasek, Sang decided to cross the waters to reach this newly discovered land. However, a storm appeared out of nowhere and nearly swallowed the boat. In a desperate attempt, Sang threw his crown into the turbulent waters. The weather and the sea immediately became calm, and the crew reached Taluk Blanga safely. As they landed, a strange beast was spotted from afar. Upon hearing that it was a lion, Sang was overjoyed and decided to name the island Sigapura, or Lion City. The discovery was said to have happened in and around AD 1297, and Sang went on to rule for 48 years before his passing. His palace and burial ground was located on top of Burkit Larangang, or Forbidden Hill. Number four, Sisters Islands. 
Lying south of Sentosa, Sisters Islands are referred to Palu Sabar Darta and Palu Sabar Lut. Many years ago, there was a pair of sisters, Mina and Lina, living by the southern coast of Singapore. Being very attached to each other, the sisters vowed to marry two brothers so that they could live together always. However, one night, Lina ran into a group of pirates by the sea. Stunned by her beauty, the pirate chief was determined to marry Lina. When the dawn broke, the pirates came and abducted Lina to their ships. Weeping over the loss of her dear sister, Mina came swimming after the boats. The stormy waters were merciless and she was doomed eventually. In a desperate attempt, Lina broke free and dived into the sea. The next day, a pair of islands appeared where the sisters had drowned. They were named Sisters Islands by the villagers in memory of the two girls. And legend has it that the next day, after the storm had subsided, Sisters Islands had appeared in the position where the two sisters were last seen. Number three, Underwater City. Legend has it that Sang Nila Atuma was the child between an adventurer king and a princess of an underwater kingdom, like we talked about before. Supposedly, Sang's father Raja had a glass case created for him to descend into the sea because he was curious about what lies beneath the calm waters. He sank into a country called Dika and was greeted by a race of men and was later taken to meet the ruler of this underwater wonderland. And that's exactly how he met Sang's mom, Princess Mathabu Labari. This world under the sea, however, is scarcely ever mentioned in history books. Number two, the Merlian. One night, the villagers living by the southern coast of Tessamek were awakened by the howling winds and crashing waves. The dark clouds blocked out the lights of the moon and the stars, turning the world in complete darkness. It was as though the island of Tessamek would be sunk by the raging sea. The terrified villagers got down on their knees and prayed. During this moment, a bright light was observed emerging from the southern waters. A massive creature, half lion, half fish, roared in anger. The battle between the fierce mythical animal and nature was intense, as the sky was filled with flat flashing lightning. The villagers had never witnessed such terrifying phenomenons before. After some time, the winds began to die down. The waves subsided and the sky started to clear. The gigantic sea beast had won the battle against nature. As it claimed its victory, it stood proudly on Sentosa. By morning, the Merlion had retreated into its waters, leaving behind a bright, colorful trail. Number one, ghostly passengers. This story originates with taxi drivers, specifically ones who have had the eerie experience of picking up late night passengers who asked to be dropped off at a cemetery. Usually the protagonist in the story is a beautiful young woman woman waiting on a remote road for a taxi. Once she's in the taxi, she doesn't speak again and wordlessly hands the driver money when she arrives at her destination. In the morning when the driver looks at the money, it's hell notes. Money burnt as an offering have replaced the Singaporean bills. At number 10 spot, we have the White Lady of Belize Drive. Every country has their own version of the White Lady Ghost, and the Philippines is no exception to that. The country started to dread and avoid Belize Drive since the 1950s when stories about a white lady floating around its streets start to spread around the area. The story goes that a white lady is a student of the University of the Philippines. The woman was the victim to a horrific crime committed by a taxi driver who picked her up, which caused her to pass away. Now, it's said that the ghost of the lady haunts that very street and his preferred victims are cab drivers. Her ghost dresses up in a white gown, dressed with long hair covering her face like a veil. Drivers who drive on Belit Drive would often drive not knowing that the white lady was silently sitting in their back seat. The only way they find out about this is that they look in their rear view mirror which they will find the lady in white staring back right at them. This is said to be the reason for all of the accidents on that street so would you take your chances or would you just take the longer detour? Now at number 9, the Romblon Triangle. If the North Atlantic has the so called Bermuda Triangle, the Philippines also has something very similar, and it's called the Romblon Triangle, which is located in the Cebuñan Sea with its three corners at Mindoro, Panay, and Masbait in the province of Romblon. The triangle covers a very small area, but due to the countless marine disasters in this area, people started talking about the Philippines version of the Devil's Triangle. Meanwhile, the Philippine Coast Guard insists that the shipwrecks in the Romblon Triangle are due to the bad weather and technical failure, and nothing mystical. But with that many issues happening within that area, they won't be able to keep calling it bad weather for much longer. Unless it is actually bad weather, but I guess we won't know. At our number eight spot, we have the My Way Curse. The My Way Curse, or might I say, the My Way Killings, is a social phenomenon in my home country, the Philippines. The Philippines has all these type of weird, creepy stories, but I swear it was just a way for our parents to keep us obedient. The curse is linked to the song My Way by Frank Sinatra. Oddly enough, since 2002, there have been unusually high numbers of deaths linked to this song, especially when people are singing it during a karaoke performance. I mean, this seems like a pretty strange coincidence, but it has been reported on news organizations all around the world, including the renowned New York Times. Due to the negative attention this phenomenon received, bars in the Philippines were completely compelled to totally remove it from the karaoke players. This song is still forbidden in many pubs today, and you risk being ejected from the bar altogether if you attempt to play it. Number seven, flying coffin. It's normal to see a coffin, though it typically gives us the creeps and goosebumps, but seeing a flying coffin in the middle of the road at night? 
Well, that's a different thing. Filipinos suggest that the flying coffin is one of the most popular horror stories shared with people. This horror story was even featured in a Halloween special of a TV show. The story is about a man walking in the middle of the night and he sees a flying or floating coffin in the middle of the road. And it then started to quickly fly towards him and almost hit him in the head when all of a sudden it disappeared. This left him horrified. And the story is still known nowadays, especially during Halloween. This one could be true, but it also could maybe just be a campfire story. At our number six spot, we have the Bao Bao. The Bao Bao, otherwise, Otherwise known as the Grave Robber is rightfully named that. It's a terrifying humanoid that is known to steal corpses from funerals or a grave to consume them later on. Stories say that the Bao Bao is an undead creature with claws that can rip through flesh along with razor sharp teeth and a long tongue to effectively consume humans. It uses its long tongue to lick the flesh and suck out the blood of its victims. It's said that once the Bao Bao finishes eating a corpse, it leaves the trunk of a banana tree in the coffin to create the illusion of a stolen corpse. He's often regarded as an Aswang as well. For all you non-Filipinos, Aswangs are these creatures that haunted all all points of our lives. They're basically these humanoids who separate their lower half of the body in order to fly around and attack unsuspecting babies. Man, the monsters in the Philippines are very creative. Halfway at number five, the headless priest. It said that the student was studying late at night at a school library and heard the sound of chains being dragged. When she checked who was making the noise, she found a priest, a headless priest. The priests played a vital role in Philippine history. They were the ones who led the church and they were also the ones who taught the students in class during the Spanish era. As their name suggests, these clergymen hang out in universities, graveyards, churches, and other places that feel spooky. They sometimes bring their heads with them and seem to be looking for them when they don't. As for their heads, people said that they're either Filipino revolutionaries during the revolution or Japanese soldiers during World War II cut off the heads of these priests. Other stories about biblical figures whose lives were taken, like St. John the Baptist, have also helped spread urban legends about priests. All the way at our number four spot, we have the Clark Air Base Hospital. This is one of the few places deemed to be haunted, not just in the Philippines, but in the whole world by the Ghost Hunters International. Season 1, Episode 20, named Unknown Soldiers, if you guys want to check it out. The hospital was used during World War II and the Vietnam War. It served as an asylum to the wounded and the dying American soldiers. This is why many people around the world claim it is the most haunted place in the Philippines. It said that the traumas and countless deaths from those conflicts have left their mark on the spirit presence in the hospital. The place is currently abandoned, which gives it this more supernatural look to it, but it said that if you visit the hospital and sleep with an eight hours after the visit, you experience extreme nightmares and intense lucid dreaming for about a week. Now at number three, Diplomat Hotel. The Diplomat Hotel is one of the go-to places for ghost hunters from different parts of the world. In fact, this hotel was featured in documentaries from different countries because of its dark history. The Diplomat Hotel is believed to be built during the early 1900s. This was built to become a vacation house for the Spaniards, priests, and nuns. This hotel is home to many happy and beautiful memories, but all of these changed during World War II. According to the stories, when the Japanese came, they gathered all the people in the hotel, separated them into different rooms, and took all of their lives. The people in the hotel were shot, beheaded, and stabbed. The worst part is the center of the hotel, where the fountain is located in the same place where the children were gathered and their lives were unfortunately taken. After World War II, the vacation house was converted into a hotel, but another tragic incident happened. A fire started in the hotel, and many guests who were staying there unfortunately passed away, which is another reason for the hotel to be haunted. The people working and visiting the hotel have experienced many scary encounters. Most of the people who visited the hotel have almost the same heavy feeling as many people are looking at them. At our number two spot, we have the Malacang Palace. This extravagant building was used for the official residence and workplace for the President of the Philippines. I covered a video on the White House and I can confirm nothing good comes from government buildings. Literally nothing. This building is located in the old Manila district of San Miguel and this building was built all the way back in 1705 so it has a lot of history including some dark moments. It used to be the home of every nationality that colonized us, from the Spanish leaders to the Japanese leaders. All sorts of ghostly apparitions are said to reside in the area, such as those of soldiers and children. Now coming in at number one, San Juanico Bridge. When Typhoon Yolanda hit the country and almost erased vast areas in Leat and Tacloban, the over 40 years old San Juanico Bridge remains strong and steady. Impressive, right? Well, what could be the secret to its strength? Legend says that the longevity and strength of the San Juanico Bridge joining the two islands is due to the countless children 
children's sacrifice during its construction. Former First Lady Imelda Marcos had allegedly conspired the kidnapping of street kids or random babies from Layette and Samar, and had offered them a demonic ritual, mixing their blood with the concrete. At the time, Imelda headed the construction of the bridge, and reportedly performed the sacrifice upon a fortune teller who said children's blood was needed for the project's completion. Bodies of the sacrificed children were then thrown down the bridge. So whenever there are haunting incidences on the bridge, people will remember the story about the unknown children sacrificed here. At number 10 spot, we have Loang Siwu. Loang Siwu, or its Javanese translation, means a thousand doors. And guess what? These guys are liars because this building doesn't have that many doors. But what they aren't lying about is the dark history associated with this place. After being completed in 1919, this building was the head office for the Dutch East Indies Railway Company. Then it transitioned into a Japanese military headquarters for World War II. So best believe this building saw countless deaths and other tragedies. Many of the supernatural activity within is attributed to what happened during World War II. It's believed that the Japanese would torture and hang people from the iron beams underneath the ceiling. And it's said by many guests who stand underneath the beams that they get touched or hear the screams of those who were tortured. At number 9 spot we have Bintaru Railway and Magari Station. Known as one of the most devastating accidents in railway history, the 1987 Bintaru train crash had two trains colliding head on due to a mere miscommunication. From the accident more than 100 lives were claimed and many many more injured. It was so bad of a crash it took first responders over two days to dig out all the bodies and people trapped under the debris. Now the train graveyard located in Mangari Station where all the train metal was buried is supposedly haunted. At the dead of night locals claim to see the ghostly apparitions of two trains going towards one another all while hearing the panic screams of those trapped inside. It is said that many pedestrians have been struck and killed after crossing these tracks and the survivors of these incidents claim they were possessed by the people of the train crash. At our number 8 spot we have Mall Clender. Back on May 15, 1998, an army of looters residing in East Jakarta had taken over the Yogyakarta department store in response to the sudden collapse of the Indonesian economy. During the time over 400 shopkeepers and visitors were stuck inside of the building in fear of being attacked if they tried to leave. But as hours went by the looters eventually burned down the four-story building with all the people still inside of it. This caused over 250 lives to perish within minutes, making one of the most devastating terrorist attacks in history. However, in the year 2000, they decided to rebuild the burnt down building into a shopping store called Clender Mall. Except many believe this mall to be haunted the moment of its construction, especially since the area claimed as many lives as it did. Workers at the mall report that they still find the charred remains of some who were burnt alive with fingers and other small body parts scattered around the mall. As well, the majority of workers claimed to be in a trance-like state at least once when working, which they all blamed it on the tortured ghost trapped in the building. At number 7 spot, we have the Ghost Palace Hotel. As the name suggests, well you already know what the name suggests. Ghost. Ooh. So as you can see, this hotel lies abandoned and looks creepy as is. The variations of the story goes from a developer being cursed due to his corrupt practices or that one night all workers and guests suddenly disappeared out of thin air. The most believable story is that of Tommy Sahardo, who was a son of a former Indonesian president. He went on to construct this hotel back in the early 1990s until he was sent to prison in 2002 which caused all construction to completely cease. Now after countless years of being completely abandoned, many believe this place is as scary as it looks. Located in the mountains of Bedugal, the ghost palace is heavily guarded, but it's said that you can enter if you pay 10,000 rupees for a ticket. Now if you enter this abandoned place, people report feeling a strong sense of loneliness even when they're with a group. As well, others report seeing the ghosts of people working, which are said to be those who pass away during the construction of this building. I mean, seeing one person in an abandoned place is enough for me to be walking straight back home. At number 6 spot, we have the Octopus House. Located on Pastor Road lies this unusual house that can be described only as having a large octopus octopus on the roof, hence the name Octopus House. Although much is unknown about this now abandoned house, it is said that it was built back in the 1990s with sources claiming the octopus started off as a bright pink opposed to the fading black color it has today. Other than the creepiness just given from looking at the house, it is said that the house is used by the church of Satan. Many stories would have guests coming in the house completely normal, but as they leave, they would leave sick with bruises and scratches to accompany that. In the humble list were the Manara Seda. The Manara Seda or the Seda Tower is a 28 story abandoned building in Kawang, East Jakarta. The building is most popular for its Roman architecture inspiration with Roman pillars and statues being imported directly from Italy. It was completed in 1998 but after ownership and financial issues it became abandoned in 2007. But that was far from the end of this building's story. Now the decaying building has quite a few ghosts stuck inside. For example when the building shut down people began to notice that the rooms of the building were lighting up despite the fact that the local power 
company cut out all power to the building. The reports were in the hundreds, with some even claiming that they saw a person standing in one of these lit up rooms. The basement of this building is supposedly the most haunted, with no security guard willing to walk this area, even when it was open. Reports say that many encounter an unseen figure, which in some cases will attack unsuspecting victims, tugging their hair and their clothes. At number four spot, we have the Tugu complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who are in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in the 1940s, these three schools were used as concentration camps by the opposing Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connected each school with one another along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere on the area. And another strange occurrence in this building is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each building. And the odd thing about that is that workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible. At a number three spot with the Ankol Bridge. Although it is known as a waterside creation area, Ankol is said to contain one of Jakarta's most tragic and dangerous spirits. The ghost that haunts Ankol's Goyang Bridge is said to be that of a beautiful young woman named Siti Arya who was kidnapped and murdered in the early 1800s after she rejected the advances of a powerful old man. Legend says that her body was left in the rice field right by where the Goyong Bridge stands now. Now referred to as the sweetheart of Angkor Bridge, Sidi's ghost, which is also sometimes called Mariam, is said to appear on the bridge at night wearing a white dress or sometimes a black kabaya. The urban legend about her also says that she caused many several drivers going past the bridge to get into fatal accidents. The story of Angkor Bridge is so famous that it became made into several movies as well as a TV show. At number two spot, we have the Casablanca Tunnel. This is considered to be Indonesia's most haunted tunnel and it is located in Busuki Ramhat Street near the Kunian area and although there is nothing documented about this bridge, it is believed to be built sometime in the 1980s. The tunnel's location used to be a graveyard, so during construction they plan to relocate it but did so improperly. It's said that this caused many of the spirits to come out of their eternal rest. Although other tunnels have had their own fair share of accidents, the ones that happen in the Casablanca tunnel are quite different. Drivers who were caught in accidents all claim seeing a woman walking across the street, causing them to crash in the first place. The woman is known as a red robe lady, and as the name suggests, she would be seen walking the tunnel in her red robe. It is said that this is the ghost of a woman whose grave was disturbed and has been there ever since. At a number one spot, we have the Drew Prude Cemetery. Of course, cemeteries make excellent haunted locations, but Drew Prude Cemetery next to Kamang is possibly the most well-known haunted graveyard in Jakarta. It is said to be haunted by the spirit of a decapitated pastor who walks around holding his head in his hands and is frequently followed by a giant black dog. He allegedly went hunting for his own grave, which in reality is in another cemetery. The priest is not the only ghost in Drew Perut, although he is the most well known. It's stated that if you're with an odd number group of individuals on Friday nights, you have the best chance of running into him. Apparently nighttime and visitors to the cemetery are quite common and there are even reports that the groundskeeper will take you on tour for a small fee. To start our list right, at number 10 we have the Queen of Spades. Basically the Russian version of Bloody Mary, this supernatural being is said to grant wishes to anyone who summons her but at a price of course. As the Joker once said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. To summon her, similar to Bloody Mary, you need to go into a dark room with a mirror and light a candle in front of it. Once you have that set up, you need to place a Queen of Hearts playing card right against the mirror. Then, taking lipstick, you need to draw a door with some stairs on the mirror. Now in front of the mirror, you need to clear your mind and close your eyes and say, Queen of Spades, come three times. While you're saying her name, visualize the Queen of Spades opening the door and walking the stairs from the lipstick drawing. This part is where many report hearing evil laughter just before they encounter the Queen of Spades. Once she appears to you, you need to hold your candle and say your wish out loud. Once you're done, blow out your candle. If not, her spirit may come out of the mirror and stay in our world. Coming in at number 9, we have the Black Curtains. This Russian story started off as a simple request from a mother to her daughter, asking her to go to the store to purchase some curtains for the home. She urged the daughter to not buy any black curtains under any circumstances. However, when the girl got to the shop, she saw that there are only black curtains. So despite her mother's wishes, she decided to get them rather than go home empty handed. When she arrived home, her mom was upset. But since they had no curtains, she put them up anyway. And this is where things get worse. During that night, the girl's father was strangled. And the night after, the same would happen to her mother and her brother. The traumatized girl rushed to the police and it was decided that they would set up cameras and microphones all over the home to investigate the murders. They ordered the girl to go to bed as normal, but as time went by, the black curtain appeared to stretch and move. 
reaching for the girl in her bed. The police immediately opened fire and the curtain began to bleed out and let out a demonic screech as it fell to the ground. Stealing our number 8 spot, we have the Old Lady of Austin Kino. This is a 5 century old story of a lady living in the district of Austin Kino, Moscow. The strange thing is, is that this lady only appears to Russian leaders, not other citizens. It is said that she appears to Russian leaders to warn them of upcoming dangers such as attacks, sicknesses, plagues, you name it. In return, this old lady only asked them to never farm on the land that she appeared on in Austin Kino. Despite getting useful advice, a powerful ruler of Austin Kino disobeyed these orders and ordered men to start digging in the land. The lady was angry and summoned all the spirits of the land and it was said that they possessed the residents of the city and led them all to their dooms. But at number 7, we have Anatoly Moskovin, the corpse collector. This is definitely a case where life is stranger than fiction. Legend has it that a mysterious person roams Russia, waiting for people to kidnap. He then kills them, preserves them, then puts their mummified bodies on display. It's a horror story fit for nightmares. This mysterious person was later found and arrested, going by the name of Anatoly Moskvin. He was reported to have killed 29 women, would mummify them, and would turn them into large dolls. His parents even thought they were large regular dolls. Anatoly was no stranger to the cemetery and had visited with his friends on multiple occasions. Here is where they said he discovered his sinister hobby. He even claimed that he was empathetic to the corpses as his sole purpose was to bring them back alive. Securing our number 6 spot, we have the Domovoy. The Domovoy is a house spirit in Slavic folklore. It is a masculine, typically small, bearded, and sometimes covered in hair all over. According to some traditions, the Domovoy takes on the appearance of current or former owners of the house, but has a grey beard, sometimes with tails or little horns. It is the protector of the house, and every home is said to have its own Domovoy. The Domovoy protected not only the human inhabitants of the house, but their herds and household animals as well. In some areas, Slavs believed that prosperity and well-being could not exist in a new home until the head of the family died and became its guardian spirit. Right in the hump of our list, we have the infamous Baba Yaga. This is a Slavic folklore that is commonly told around Russia. The Baba Yaga is a supernatural entity or witch that takes the form of an elderly lady. She is said to be the refugee of the dead, meaning this is the form she had taken after coming back from the afterlife. Appearing as weak and fragile, this would be a good way for the Baba Yaga to disguise what her true sinister intentions were. She is described as having bright red eyes and sharp metal or stone teeth. Her house is reported by witnesses to be a dark house deep in the woods that is standing on two chicken legs. Her house is said to be moved around by Baba Yaga's power to travel to different locations to find more victims. When people encounter the Baba Yaga, she is said to be helpful on some occasions, but most of the time, she would be dangerous and bloodthirsty. For example, in one story, she would do something heroic like locating a missing bride, but in another story, she is a child-eating monster who can't stop. A famous disaster takes our number 4 spot, the Chernobyl Blackbird. Just a few days before the infamous Chernobyl nuclear plant disaster, many workers at the plant reported seeing a large, dark, and mutated man with gigantic wings. This humanoid creature was given the name Black Bird of Chernobyl, and despite the fact that it had no head, it had piercing red eyes that would send chills to the spines of anyone caught looking. Before the nuclear disaster, workers claimed to have been plagued by terrifying dreams and many instances of bad luck. Fast forward to the day of the disaster and now workers have reported seeing a large black bird like creature with a 40 foot wingspan flying through the smoke of Chernobyl. Many people believe these creatures to be a bad omen since they are shown around history to appear before tragic events. You should definitely know this one but at number 3 we have the Russian sleep experiment. This experiment was conducted in the 1940s in a top secret Soviet facility. The Soviets used 5 gulag prisoners to test what no sleep did to their brains and body in 30 days. They promised freedom when, or rather, if they survived. They would use air stimulants to keep them awake for all of the days. In the course of five days, the situation went out of control. The subjects blocked observation and went all kinds of crazy with constant screaming and moaning. Then on the ninth day, a prisoner was screaming so loud that he completely tore his vocal cords right off. Then on day 14, they tried to evoke a reaction by telling the prisoners they would open the chamber, but they would get a voice back saying, we don't want to be free. 
Then on day 15, after another day of silence, they decide to open the chamber where they saw the unspeakable. When they opened it, they immediately noticed one of the prisoners was dead due to mutilation. As the soldiers were taking out the other prisoners out, they noticed chunks of human meat all over the room. The other four had muscles and skin torn off from their bodies, which all seemed to be self-inflicted. Their abdominal organs had also been removed. As soldiers were trying to get them out, they began begging to stay inside the chamber with the gas on. But due to this traumatizing sight, the witnessing soldiers would follow a similar fate, with many dying and others reported ripping off their own reproductive organs. Beethoven would be shocked at our number two spot, but we have the red piano. This story begins when these parents bought a red piano for their daughter who had all kinds of desire to finally play on one. Once she had started playing, she couldn't stop. Just like a young Beethoven, after hours of playing, her fingers would begin to hurt. Her parents relieved her by telling her that it was normal and that's just part of the learning process. When she went back to play the piano a few days later, she found that the piano was broken. The parents asked the lady to fix it, but oddly, she asked everyone to exit the room to ensure that there were no distractions. After it was fixed, the girl played once again, but would fall ill after a while of playing on it. Then, the piano broke again, with the pair having to call the same lady to fix. Due to the curiosity of how she fixed it, the parents decided to peep through the keyhole of the room to see what she was doing. The lady was found opening the piano, pulling out a jar of blood and drinking it. When the police inspected the piano, it was discovered that the piano had tiny needles on the keys, so every time the daughter played, she was really getting drained of her own blood. Taking our number one spot of our list, we have the Chapayoscos. Once there was a couple, Elena and Alexi, who worked at a chemical plant. Their love for each other was very strong. However, one day before their wedding, an accident occurred. Alexi was at the chemical plant when a chemical fire bursted out of nowhere, eventually making the whole plant explode. Unfortunately for her, it was too late to escape and he passed away in the fire along with one other co-worker. Upon hearing the devastating news, Elena, with no intentions to live anymore, threw herself in front of a train. Eyewitnesses said that she wore a white gown before jumping on the track, which was the same outfit that her grandmother gave her for the wedding. She was later buried in the municipal cemetery. And now people who decide to visit their loved ones at the cemetery report seeing Elena in her white gown strolling through the grounds. Apparently, her ghost is still looking for her loved one, Alexi. At our number 10 spot, we have the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert, located between Mongolia and China, is said to have the Mongolian Death Worm, otherwise known as the Intestine Worm, due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This two to seven feet long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth. And if you even get close enough to touch the creature, it's believed that the entire body is covered in this sticky, poisonous substance that will kill you just on touch alone. And if that was enough, it can even electrocute you in the same way in Yokan. While movies of the creature depicted as this large colossal being, it's believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet in its total length. But regardless, the fact that this creature can hide literally anywhere in the desert sands and come out basically whenever it wants, and it has no weaknesses, it makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. At number 9 spot, we have the Diao Si Gui. This mythical creature is also known as the Hanged Ghost, and it's said that the people who have taken their life through hanging or have been executed that way come back and become this vengeful spirit. They claim the spirit appears as a decaying corpse with a long red tongue that hangs far out of their mouth, never going back into their mouth. And let me tell you, these guys smell horrendous as well. So you could imagine how terrifying this would be to encounter. Except if you're a KISS fan and you're used to this sticking tongue stuff. According to legend, these spirits will appear to unsuspecting people during night, usually by a tree or a building. Then they will try to convince others to join them in the afterlife. Life. So in China, it's best to avoid places where people have taken their life because this is where these spirits tend to wander. If you decide to do the complete opposite, the creature will follow you around for your entire life, causing bad luck every corner of the way. At number 8 spot, we have the Akaname. The Akaname is straight out of Japanese myth. It is described to be this small goblin looking creature about the size of a child, except they're hideous. They have greasy slimy hair and their body is completely oily. If that didn't make you uncomfortable, maybe the fact that they use their long tongues to lit bathroom floors will. But don't worry, they won't appear in clean bathrooms as their dirty long tongues have nothing to lick. Instead, they target bathrooms that have been neglected and are dirty. So people, do yourself and everyone a favor and clean your bathrooms. 
please. They lick and devour any of the filth, grease, hair, and waste that they come across. And the Akinami also choose to stay away from humans, but instead they creep in the darkness and multiply at rates comparable to a disease spreading. They come in both one-eyed and two-eyed variations, which only adds to the fact that these are grotesque creatures. So I stress this again, clean your bathroom so we can all avoid these type of problems, including stuff with these ugly guys. At number 7 spot, we're the Zhangxi, also known as the Chinese Hopping Vampire. The Zhangxi comes from a phrase meaning stiff corpse. They are psychic vampire zombies, yes, you heard that right, who feeds off a person's chi rather than their blood. And for those who don't know, chi is considered to be a person's life force, which means that it's the energy that flows throughout your entire body, basically giving you life in a sense. So unlike the vampires we have over here in the West, the Zhangxi prefers not to consume humans or our blood, and they also aren't able to walk, so they are seen hopping around with their hands out in the front of them to maintain their balance. Many believe these creatures are created following a violent death, an improper burial, use of supernatural powers, or you get bit by another one. Remember, they're vampires and zombies, so don't get it confused. This is a horror hybrid of this century. At number 6 spot, we're the Sigbin. Straight out of my home country is yet another disgusting and hideous creature. This creature is said to have the appearance of a half hornless goat and half kangaroo, but when I look at it, I think of a chupacabra, but worse. It has the ability to use its long kangaroo tail to whip others with the force able to knock someone out. They lurk mainly in the night and are known to hunt anyone or anything they see. They'll use their sharp teeth to suck out the blood blood out of their victims, or they'll use it to seek out children to take their hearts just to use for decorations. So pretty horrible stuff, I know, I'm sorry kids. When they do walk around, they actually prefer to walk backwards with their head tucked between their legs like this. Locals in the Philippines claim that some people capture them and keep them as guardians for their property or in these very large jars. I have no idea what my people are doing, but yeah, let's not do this. In the hump of our list, we have the Zheng Lot. These are small creatures located in Indonesia, but mainly claim their presence in specifically in Java. They take on the appearance of a deformed humanoid doll with long growing hair and long nails. The doll by itself causes no harm but when you begin to feed the doll animal blood or even human blood, it will start to work as black magic. A Zheng La is believed to belong to the vampire family because of its main nourishment comes from the blood of animals or humans. The owner of the Zheng La must feed the creature with a drop of their blood each and every single day. If the owner fails to do so, it is believed that their loved ones will face dire consequences. The blood must not be fed directly to the mouth of the Zhengla, but instead be placed beside it. It's believed that the Zhenglas are the spirits of those who passed away after they had practiced black magic in order to obtain everlasting life. Except when they're met with death, the earth would refuse to accept their body, instead turning them into this hideous bloodthirsting creature. At number 4, we have the Flying Head. This one is definitely the strangest one on this list, but it's still scary, so bear with me. The Flying Head, or the Shuru Botoshi, is, is one of Japan's most craziest mythical creatures because it's literally just a floating head. It's believed to be an ancient deity that literally is just a flying head that goes around and eats people. They prefer to attack humans by surprise, by hiding on the top of trees, or in places where you're completely alone. When they catch up to you, they will drop quickly to the ground like a stone, either squishing you to death or trapping you in its mouth to chew you right after. Either way, you will pass away. If you do manage to evade them, they will stop at nothing to get you, and will do so while laughing uncontrollably, which only makes this encounter that much much more terrifying. At number 3 spot we have the Tao Ti. These creatures from Chinese mythology are definitely one of the most hideous looking creatures from this list of creatures. And we know how beautiful China makes some of these creatures so this one was just a surprise. They are considered to be one of the 4 evil creatures of the world due to its malevolence and destruction as a creature. If you ever wanted to see these boys in action... Depiction of this creature would appear mainly on bronze artifacts, but that first glimpse of them on that movie was all we needed to know that these creatures are not good. At number 2 spot, we have the Tengu. If you ever seen this emoji, then you know what a Tengu somewhat looks like. These creatures live in the mountains and appear to have large feathery wings and wearing a monk robe. Based on the emoji, you already know that their face is red with a long nose and the head of a bird. Originally, the Tengu were seen as evil spirits that caused pure destruction and chaos everywhere they went. This was because Buddhist practice 
practices showed that the Tengu were demons and tricksters who opposed Buddha. Tengu were considered demons of death and destruction by Buddhists, but gradually softened into troublesome protectors of forests and mountains, which is the role they continue to play in Japanese folklore. I mean, they look pretty cool and I see it all the time every time I go on my keyboard, and it would be nice if they use them in a video game or something because they're pretty cool looking creatures. At number one spot, we're the Nian. To end our point, we got yet another Chinese mythical creature because there are just too many not to mention. The story of the Nian goes that they would feast on human flesh every single New Year's Day. On this day, they would come out of their hiding place in the mountains and raid villages, eat their crops, and when that wasn't enough, they would attack the humans. Except they would begin to notice that the creature would run away by the end of the night when they started to celebrate New Year's. They started to believe it was because they used a lot of the color red, which was the same color as the Nian, which could have acted as intimidation. They also noticed that fire and a lot of noise would scare away the creature, so every single year the festivals got bigger and louder to frighten the beast away for good. The Neon is described as being a flat faced lion with the body of a bull and the horn of a unicorn. And ever since, the Neon has been used during the festivals to commemorate the once terrifying creature. Mm -hmm.